Toyota has finally, finally taken a seat at the EV table with this, the BZ4X, which is also the twin under the skin to the Subaru Solterra, also launching in Australia around now. But the Toyota, it's actually bigger inside than a RAV4, about the same price as a Tesla Model Y, and according to its chief engineer, can even outshine the Land Cruiser Prado in some, some, off-road situations. You might have noticed I mentioned three pretty popular cars there. So is the BZ4X a winning combination of all of them? Let's go find out. Now it's a bit of a price shock for the Toyota, with the brand's local executives having spent months, months, warning us that the BZ4X wouldn't be cheap. So starting at just $600 more than the entry-level Tesla Model Y is actually a fair bit cheaper than most of us were expecting. The front-wheel drive BZ4X opens proceedings and is priced from 66 grand, but also available is a twin-motor all-wheel drive variant, which is priced from 74,900. Alternatively, the BZ4X is being offered with a three-year full-service lease, which is offered through Toyota's finance arm. It includes scheduled servicing, repairs, tires, roadside assist, rego, and insurance. But interestingly, Toyota retains full ownership of the vehicle, and at the end of the agreed period, the owner can either hand it back, lease it again, or jump into another Toyota. You will be asked to pay around 1700 bucks per month for the privilege, and it's worth pointing out that at the end of the three-year lease agreement, you won't actually own the car. Anyway, the front-wheel drive BZ4X gets LED headlights, 20-inch alloys, heated side mirrors, a powered tailgate, and privacy glass on all rear windows. Inside, there's fabric and faux leather trim, a powered driver's seat, heated front seats, dual-zone climate control, and keyless entry and start. While on the tech front, you can expect a sizable 12.3-inch central touchscreen with wireless phone mirroring and a Hey Toyota virtual assistant. The cloud-based nav will guide you to charging stations and over-the-air updates are available too. Step up to the all-wheel drive model and you'll find a more stylish exterior, including a roof spoiler, a glass roof, roof rails, and gloss black trimmings. Inside, there's a JBL sound system, a 10-watt wireless charger, ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, and a kick sensor for that powered tailgate. Now, it's also built as the off-road ready model, if you can believe it, with 212 millimeters of ground clearance and X-mode drive modes, including snow, dirt, and deep snow mud, to deliver what Toyota promises is the benchmark off-road ability among BEV SUVs. So, first things first, the BZ4X looks like a car and not like a spaceship, which in my opinion is always a good thing. And given really the only thing that's going to differentiate this from the Subaru is its design, it's probably important that Toyota gets it right. Now, both models ride on these 20-inch alloys, but this is the all-wheel drive version, which means it gets a slightly fancier exterior treatment with a glass roof, these roof rails, and some gloss black highlights. Now, there are a couple of quirks, so, and one of them is the fact that these kind of constant color changes make it feel a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle that's been pieced together. And there's this strip across the bonnet here, which in this all-wheel drive version is gloss black, but in the front-wheel drive version is more of a matte gray and can look a little ordinary. Step inside the BZ4X and that car-like familiarity continues with Toyota going for a far more traditional car layout, unlike the Tesla Model Y, with the screen in front of you that has your speed, driving range, battery state, and all those kinds of things. Now in the center, the big touch screen has smartphone mirroring, of course, and it works a treat, but there's also physical buttons for core functions, which I always appreciate. And I do love some of the cabin materials, especially this fabric wrapped dash, which is pretty cool. That said though, I'm not as convinced by the tunnel vision view of this screen, which can get blocked by the steering wheel. Also, there's no glove box. Instead, your owner's manuals and those kind of things have to live under here. So as I mentioned, it's actually bigger in here than a Toyota RAV4, and it rides on roughly the same wheelbase as an LC300 because the wheels have been pushed to the furthest corners. And predictably, that's a bit of a boon for backseat riders. I'm sitting behind roughly my own 175 centimeter driving position. And as you can see, miles of knee room, more than enough headroom. In fact, plenty of space in all directions. And there are some other practicality perks back here too. You get twin USB ports, you get air vents for backseat riders, you get twin cup holders in the pull-down divider, and ISO fixed attachment points in each window seat. Now, that said, there are some quirks. There's no frunk, for example, which is pretty common in the world of EVs these days. Instead, you're left just with the boot space. And there's no traditional PowerPoint, which you find in a lot of EVs too, to keep things like laptops charged up when you're on the move. Front wheel drive models get the single motor delivering 150 kilowatts and 266 newton meters, while all wheel drive models like this one get twin motors, upping the grunt to 160 kilowatts and 337 newton meters. 
Both BZ4X models are fitted with a 71.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and both will deliver in excess of 400 kilometers in driving range on the WLTP cycle. But of course, the dual motors range is a little bit lower than the single motors range, which is often the case in the world of EVs. Now, when it comes time to recharge, it's set up for 150 kilowatt DC fast charging, while AC charging caps out at 11 kilowatts. Welcome to the driver's seat of the BZ4X and specifically the all-wheel drive twin motor variant. But I actually want to start this by talking about the front-wheel drive variant, the single motor, which I actually think might be the pick of the bunch based both on value and performance. Sure, it's not as powerful as this, but take my word for it, it still feels plenty perky. There's more than enough power on offer. And in fact, we took it this morning on some really nice twisting roads outside of Canberra and it handled it all beautifully. There was plenty of punch out of corners. There were really no complaints at all. Really, the selling point of this all-wheel drive isn't so much its on-road performance, but its off-road performance. Toyota has fitted it with what it calls its X-Mo, which is kind of like a series of off-road settings for this car, including like deep mud, snow, and all that kind of thing. And as I mentioned in the introduction, the chief engineer actually says that in some off-road conditions, this is actually a better option than the Land Cruiser a Prado, but of course, not all off-road conditions, as that is a proper off-road focused four-wheel drive. And to be fair to Toyota, we did take this off-road yesterday. Nothing too challenging, but certainly up some fairly steep, rocky inclines, places you wouldn't see that many other EVs, and it certainly handled it all really, really well. But I was kind of left with the question of who's really gonna take this vehicle too far off-road? I just can't get into the mindset of the buyer who's buying a Toyota EV to go and do something like that. So with all of that in mind, I reckon you're better off sticking with the front-wheel drive version, which is cheaper but still plenty perky on the road. Now, speaking of on-road characteristics, there are a couple of drawbacks with this vehicle. One is the fact that the ride is probably a little bit too firm in the city and on broken road surfaces at slow speed, it just feels a little bit jarring. The flip side of that is that it really comes into its own on twisting roads with the BZ4X feeling far more dynamic than I expected it to on the really twisty stuff. It's quite a lot of fun and the tires kind of give up long before the car does. But again, I'm trying to get into the mindset of someone who might buy this car and surely city comfort is more important than flowing road speed, right? And the other slight negative is that on perfectly smooth roads, this thing sounds fantastic in the fact that it sounds like nothing at all. But when you get on the course to chip stuff that can be pretty common in Australia, there is a fair bit of tire noise in the cabin, made a little bit more obvious by the fact that there's no engine or exhaust note, of course. But to be totally honest with you, those are fairly minor quibbles and I've been pretty impressed with the BZ4X right across the board. More impressed than I probably expected to be, to be perfectly honest with you. And I think that's because Toyota was dragging its feet on EVs for so long, it really kind of felt like they never wanted to do it, almost like they were being forced into it. So I wasn't sure what to expect from their first offering, but this one's handled it all pretty well. There are definitely ways the Model Y has this beat, things like driving range, practicality, some of the EV specific tech, but equally there are definitely ways that the BZ4X has the Tesla beat in my opinion. One of them is design, I prefer to look at this car than I do the Model Y, but also I'd prefer to drive this one around twisty corners than I would the Model Y too. And I must admit I like the familiarity of the cabin experience, although I appreciate that is a very personal thing and there are plenty of Tesla owners who love the way that cabin is set up. But perhaps most importantly, not that long ago, you would never mention Toyota and Tesla in the same sentence, but this BZ4X changes that, and it's just the beginning of the EV story for Toyota. And that's a good thing too, because they're late to the party and there is ground to make up, so let's see what the Japanese giant can do. Both BZ4X models are fitted with what Toyota calls its latest safety sense, with highlights including AEB with motorbike, cyclist and pedestrian detection, along with emergency steering assist, lane trace assist, active cruise, seven airbags and speed sign recognition. The BZ4X also carries a five-star ANCAP safety rating. Toyota reckons it targeted 90% battery health after 10 years for the BZ4X, which would be plenty impressive, except they only actually guarantee 70% after eight years. Elsewhere, Toyota's five-year unlimited kilometre warranty applies with servicing required every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, capped at 180 bucks per visit for the first five years. It's priced to compete with the Tesla Model Y, but the experiences are actually pretty different. One's futuristic, the other far more familiar. And if I'm being honest, there are definitely ways in which I like this Toyota more. It might be the brand's first EV, but it does paint a pretty rosy picture of its electrified future. If only to get a wriggle on, and start making a few more of them.